still explaining the measures being taken to improve the fishing industry in Uganda. Uh, we are continuing from there. We are saying that uh, the government has tried to improve um, on the transport sector, on the transport sector, especially those roads that are connecting the learning sites for easy transportation of the fishing gear, uh, the workers, and also fish and fish products from the uh, learning sites. A good example is Navagereka Road, which is connecting uh, Navagereka, which is connecting Kasenyi learning site to major markets like uh, Entebbe, Kampala, and the others. We have Masese, Masese Road. This one is connecting uh, Masese to Jinja and other market centers. We have Pinto Road. Pinto Road is connecting Kasese learning site to Lake Victoria to uh, major markets like Chotera, like um, Masaka, and the other markets. And so this has encouraged fishing to take place. Then there is improved research. Improved research, which has led to the restocking of the depleted lakes, like Lake Victoria. We have also have, uh, had the, uh, the fish caging, where uh, businessmen have tried to buy plots on the water body and this has brought about sustainable use of uh, the lakes and therefore increasing on the fish catch and earning a lot of uh, revenue to the government. They have also tried to uh, train training uh, skilled labor at the different universities, especially Makero University and also the Entebbe uh, in, uh, Institute of Fisheries. They have, many people have been trained in as far as fish, uh, fish, uh, fishing is concerned. Uh, they have made researches in how to improve on the fishing industry. And at the end of the day, we are seeing uh, fishing, uh, fishing developing at a higher level. We also have um, an introduction, uh, introduction of modern methods of fishing modern methods of fishing, like long lining, like uh, gear netting, uh, uh, like trolling, majorly used on Lake Victoria. These have increased on the catch, and it has helped the government to earn a lot of uh, foreign exchange, because these are commercial methods of fishing. When they get a bigger catch, then they sell it off to the outside countries, especially European uh, Union. We shall also agree that many uh, learning sites have been modernized and upgraded. We have uh, piers which have been constructed around those learning sites like uh, Gaba, in, uh, Gaba in Kampala, uh, like, in, uh, like at Kasensero in Wakiso, like at, uh, at uh, Lambu in Masaka. These piers help in, in the landing uh, of uh, boats and other vessels. We have also weighing sheds, weighing sheds which have been constructed there. We have uh, uh, ice stores which provide ice to the fishermen as they move towards the, the lakes to cut out fishing. All these uh, uh, modern facilities which have been put around those, uh, those uh, learning sites have helped in the development of fishing in Uganda. We shall also find out that uh, they have also tried, the fishermen have tried to form cooperative societies which have helped them to get uh, loans and increase on their capital so that they can have a commercial fishing. And these circles have helped them to get loans from uh, different commercial banks like uh, Stanbeck, uh, Sentinel Bank, and others. And this one has boosted uh, them. They can now afford to use modern fishing methods. They can afford to use modern uh, preservation methods. And at the end of the day, this has boosted the fishing industry. Then uh, we have what we call uh, marine uh, police which has tried to promote security 
promotion of security along major fishing grounds like Lake Victoria. This has controlled the sea pirates. It has also controlled the, uh, the death of fishermen, the smuggling of fish along the water bodies, especially Lake Victoria and Lake Choga. And this one has earned a lot of revenue to the country because the fish that used to be smuggled outside uh, the country can always be brought to our economy and then we earn a lot of uh, foreign exchange. Then we have also uh, different uh, uh, we have uh, uh, different industries which are located around uh, the major lakes like uh, uh, industries like uh, Uganda breweries at uh, Luzira uh, the Bidiko company at uh, Masese they have been encouraged to always uh, treat their wastes before being disposed of into the lake and this has a uh, uh, promoted fishing because there is always uh, multiplication of fish that does no longer suffocate because of uh, impurities and so increasing on uh, the catch and uh, uh, the um, and uh, the industry and um, then briefly that's what i can say about to uh, uh, that first question but one thing you need to know in paper three you have to first of all give the status for these topical questions you have to give the status after you're given the status or is uh, draw a sketch map of uganda showing those particular features that are required to be indicated in that map and respect the qualities of a good map then after you have done that go into the gist of the question and answer it but if a question is uh, having only one part, if it doesn't have part A and B, then you're required to always write more than 20 points. And um, uh, then if it is having part A and part B, the first part at least always write not less than 15 points, and the part B, you write not less than uh, 10 points for you to earn max. Now I want to move to another question. I want us to move to another question. Uh, assess the impact of forests on uh, the environment in Uganda. Assess the impact of forests on the environment in Uganda. The approach is there. You're supposed to first of all give the status of forests or forestry in Uganda. Uh, draw a sketch map. Uh, yeah, you, you're giving the status. Then sketch, you draw the sketch map of Uganda showing the major forests. Then after you have done that, you will give the positive contribution and negative contribution, then conclusion. Now, the status, uh, Uganda, Uganda's forestry industry is composed of uh, many forests, and uh, the major forests are called uh, the tropical rainforests. The tropical rain forests, which account for about 81.1% uh, of the total land covered by the forests in Uganda. These tropical rainforests have been subdivided into, uh, into three. We have what we call the tropical lowland forests, tropical lowland forests, and uh, among the examples, we have Mabira forest in Ibuikwe. We have uh, Mara Bigambo Mara. Mara Bigambo. This one is in Gusheng, but you can also find some uh, 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 treaches of this forest in Rubirizi. We have Malamagambo, Malamagambo. Malamagambo forest is found in Irakai. We have Budongo. Budongo is in Masindi. 
but we can also find it in Chiriandongo. We have uh, Bogoma. Bogoma is found in Hoima. These ones are called the tropical lowland uh, forests. We have what we call the tropical highland forests. The tropical highland forests include uh, those forests which are found along the slopes of mountains. And uh, the examples, we have mountain Elgon forest. Mountain Elgon forest, this one is found in Imbari. We have mountain Renzoli. Renzoli forest in Kasese. We have uh, what we call uh, wind impenetrable. In the Chigezi Highlands, we have Chigezi Highlands in Kisoro in particular, Kisoro or Kanungu. Then we also have uh, river rhine forests, river rhine forests among the examples, we have what we call the Katonga River Rain, Katonga River Rain Forest. This one is found in Impiji. We have Kafu, Kafu River Rain Forest. This one is found in Masindi. Then we have also what we call the Arbat Nile Forests, Arbat. Nile forests. These ones are found in the West Nile districts like uh, uh, like uh, Nebi, like Nebi, uh, Ruwa, Moyo, and others. We have the river rain. I mean the Nile river rain. This one is uh, pronounced in Kayunga. So we have those ones, uh, the tropical rainforest, and they've been divided into three. Then we have what we call uh, the woodlands. We have the woodlands and the common ones. The common ones are Tim and the Molongole forest. Tim and the Molongole. Forests in Kabong. We have these are woodlands. We have K mountain K forests, or the K forests in Moyo. These ones also move to Adumani. We have the planted forests. The planted forests include uh, Katugo. Katugo in Nakasongola. We have Katera in Kiboga. We have Muko and Mafuga planted forests. Mafuga planted forest in Kabari. Mafuga and Muko in Kabari. We have uh, we have another Katera forest in Rakai at the fringes of um, at the fringes of um, Malab Malabi forest. We have many of these planted. We have what we call uh, Lendu forest. This one is in West Nile, specifically in Zombo district. We have Wiseli. Wiseli forest in Wiseli and Abel. These ones are found in Gulu. All these are planted forests. Besides, we have uh, other aspects on the status of the forests or forestry in Uganda. We shall find out that forests, most of the forests in Uganda have been uh, conserved as forest reserves. And they are manned by NFA. They are NFA and UWA. Uh, National Forest Authority and the Uganda Wildlife Authority. They are the ones, they are the bodies, government bodies, which are responsible for managing forests in Uganda. UWA 
is Uganda Wildlife Authority. Why are they managing these forests? Because some of these forests uh, sometimes act as uh, national, uh, national reserves or wildlife reserve reserves and the so who is responsible for there is a lot of reafforestation and the uh, afforestation programs in Uganda that's why we have seen those planted forests uh, we shall find out that uh, on the fringes of most of these forests a lot of reafforestation is being done if you went to Mabira forest you find out that they are uh, trying to replant uh, mahogany, musizi mm, trees around Nagoje in uh, Mukono. If you moved to Rakai, uh, around Malavi Gambo forest, still on uh, its fringes, around uh, those areas called Minziro, eh? Minziro, they are also trying to replant uh, the exhausted trees. Then afforestation, this one is uh, uh, is in very many areas uh, and that's why we have very many planted forests as we have mentioned them, the Mafuga, the Muko in Kabale, uh, the Katugo, uh, the Katera, uh, the Abel, the Balendu in, in Zombo and many others. Then still on the status, uh, we shall agree that we shall agree that the types of uh, trees, um, ex exotic trees that have been introduced, uh, we have the pine, eucalyptus, eucalyptus, and the cypress. These have been grown uh, uh, on uh, uh, very many plantations, forest plantations. Briefly, that's what I can say about to the status. Now the question is asking us to is asking us to uh, to but before before we can go into the gist of the question, can we have that map there? You must draw that sketch map and indicate those forests that we have been talking about. We have those forests there. You can see my video. And when you're drawing this map of Uganda when you're drawing this map of Uganda, I'll always request you to indicate the major features for you to easily locate the different features that you need to indicate. The major features are Lake Victoria, River Nile, uh, we have Lake Choga, we have Albert Nile, Lake, uh, Lake Albert, Lake uh, Edward, and George. These ones are going to help us, and also include this River Aswa. And this, we hope you to always indicate those features in their relative positions. So when you look at this map, we have Mabira Forest. You can easily see Mabira Forest is in the western side of River Nile. Then we have uh, another, uh, another lowland tropical rainforest called Budongo. Budongo is in Masindi, Bugoma in Hoima. We have Kalinzu uh, Forest. This Kalinzu Forest is in Rubirizi. Uh, then uh, these are supposed to use, are supposed to have uh, the key indicating that uh, the lowland forests have been uh, uh, symbolized with the, an orange color. Then you go to uh, the you, you you go to to the woodlands. We have our team there in uh, the team in uh, uh, in Kabong. We have Moroto in Moroto. We have Agoro Agu in, uh, in Kitgu. We have Zoka with Seli uh, in uh, Zoka is in uh, Moyo. Then we have with Seli. With Seli is in, uh, with Seli is in, uh, in Chitugu. Sorry, is in, uh, with Seli is in uh, Guru. We have, uh, we have our Katugo, the planted one. We have Katugo, we have Abel, we have Agwata. Uh, we can see Kagoma there in Jinja. Then we have Mo here. Uh, we have Roho. Roho is in Bunyarguru. Uh, Bunyarguru. Then we have Muko and Mafuga around there. 
then you indicate all these on the key. Then the question is asking us to explain the importance or to examine the importance of forests on, uh, on the environment. One, forests modify climate. Forests modify climate, especially in the surrounding areas. They have led to the formation of convection rainfall due to, tra uh, to evapotranspiration. This rainfall has been important in the development of agriculture and other sectors. You agree with me that those areas which are near Lake, I mean, which are near uh, Mavira Forest in Buikwe have been used in the, uh, in the uh, development of agriculture. That's why we have uh, Lugazi sugarcane plantation near Mavira Forest in Buikwe. We also have the Kakira tea plantation in, uh, the Kakira tea plantation in uh, Jinja, which is also near Mavira Forest. If we moved to the west, you find that Chamhunga tea estate is near Chamhunga Forest and also and uh, also Maramagambo Forest in Bushen. The Kinyara Sugar uh, Cane Plantation in Masindi is also located near uh, Budongo Forest. The reason why all those farms, all those plantations are located there is because of the heavy rainfall received in those areas brought about by uh, the existence of those forests. Forests uh, have promoted tourism. Area alone, uh, we said that some of these for, uh, forests have been gazetted as uh, national parks or wildlife uh, reserves. And so they have promoted tourism. The wild animals which have uh, been harbored by those forests, like uh, Semlik Forest, uh, there in um, Semlik Forest in uh, Bundibujo, uh, it, uh, uh, it is at the same time referred to as uh, uh, Semlik National Park. If you go to Mala Bigambo of Rakai, though it has not yet been gazetted into a national park, there are a lot of wild animals, the baboons, the elephants, the buffaloes, and others. These have promoted tourism, earning a lot of foreign exchange. Still on tourism, forests, they themselves, they have a very beautiful scenery that attracts tourists. These areas have also been used as camping sites. If you go to, if you're going to Jinja, you find a lot of camping sites in Mavira Forest. You, when you're going to Masaka, you see a lot of camping sites in the Panga Forest in Fiji, and so promoting uh, f uh, tourism, earning a lot of foreign exchange to the government used to develop infrastructures, and never to explain and also give the examples. Uh, then we shall also agree that so, uh, forests uh, forest have tried to uh, to maintain soil fertility as well as controlling soil erosion. They have maintained soil fertility and also controlled soil erosion. The roots, those buttress roots, for example, in the tropical rainforests, have been responsible for binding the soils together. They cannot easily be taken out by the agents of soil erosion, like running water. <coughs> then uh, the leaf forage, the leaves, when they fall down, we shall find out that they uh, naturally mulch the land. And so this has brought about fertility of the land, uh, promoting agriculture. That's why we're having a lot of uh, uh, crops like sugar canes, matoke, and others being, bro uh, being grown around the fringes of those uh, forests. A good example, sugar canes uh, near Chinyara, uh, near Budongo Forest. Uh, yes, I beg to end here, but you can always contact me on my number 0782 37 36 5 6. I wish you a nice day. Mwekume, Corona Rio.